Hello everyone, I thought today I'd have a look at my roving setup. I use this a lot when I'm river fishing, but it's just as useful on lakes to be honest. And um, I leave the rod set up all the time and if I've got just a couple of hours fishing, this is generally what I'll take with me. Often I'll just take one rod, I won't bother with two, and I'll just spend half an hour in each swim, uh, going around sort of first thing in the morning, last thing at night, trying to find a fish or two when the conditions are right. So let's have a look at the gear. It's dead, dead simple, but everything's there for a reason. So to start with, I'm using 12 foot, three pound rod. Nice uh, through action. This is actually a Nash entity, um, but any sort of rod of that kind of test curve will do. And I've got a bait runner reel, and that's loaded with 65 pound, that's 30 kilo braid. Now you might think that's excessive, but that's there for a reason. And the idea is that all my rig components and main line are designed to put maximum pressure on the hooks. So if I get snagged up, um, nothing's going to break except I'm going to straighten the hooks. So the idea being <clears throat> that if I do get snagged up, I'm going to get the whole rig back um, just by being able to pull and straighten the hooks out, whether I'm stuck in rocks, um, a snag of branches or whatever, whatever it is, those hooks will straighten rather than uh, any of the other terminal tackle breaking and leaving the baited rig out in the water. So for me, 65 pound braid is my standard. Generally I'm fishing at short range, you know, normally an underarm lob, so it, I'm not worried about the diameter of it affecting uh, casting distance or anything like that. I've got friends who'll use 20 kilo, that's 45 pound braid, um, and it, that really depends on the size and the wire diameter of the hooks that you're using. I tend to go quite big on my hooks, often using size 4s, and I know that with the two patterns of hook that I use, which is the Pike Pro um, or the Owner ST3036, I can straighten those out using this, this braid and the traces I'm using. Moving on, and we'll start at the top of the rig and work our way down. Um, I've got a stop knot there, just to hold the float at the right depth, and uh, I like to make that out of uh, this stop knot elastic or pole elastic. Um, it's very uh, supple, doesn't damage the line, and uh, can be moved quite easily. Next up, I've got a 7mm fluoro bead just free running on the line and that's going to stop my large pike pro float and i just use the large size of the dumpy slider most of the time ideal on the river because it's really buoyant and even if it gets caught in the current it's not going to drag under too easily you could um, if you're mainly fishing steel waters uh, change to something that's more um, uh, sensitive like a smaller float or one of the bottom end only pencils um, but as I say, as I'm fishing a variety of different venues, um, I have to set this up uh, for the, the toughest really, which is the river, um, and work backwards from that. But there is ways of using the float and to make it more sensitive. And what I'll generally do is I'm using enough lead that it's going to hold bottom very easily in a river or still water. I'll put the real one bait runner after I've tightened up to it and I'll set it so the line's tight to the rod and the float is just sort of half cocked. That way, if I get a pick up, the float will either do that or do that and start moving off. So even though it's a big, you know, might argue not the most sensitive of floats, actually I can set it so I'm gonna see bites very, very quickly. So with that set at the right depth, <coughs> I've then got my up trace, and this is a Pike Pro ledger up trace because basically the rig I'm using is a float ledger. Um, and that's got a large run ring on it, and it's, going to stop any tangles or if I do get a tangle it will stop me getting bitten off if a pike picks up the line above the trace. Um, very important um, that is. Uh, I know some people don't don't use up traces. I tend to use them most of the time. Um, if you feather your cast and can tighten up to it then generally you're not going to have too many bite offs. It's you know quite a rare thing but I really want to try and eliminate it as much as possible if I can. Next up we have on the on the up trace we have I normally use a minimum of a two ounce lead, often bigger, often four or five ounces from fishing on the river to hold bottom. And that's on one of our exhale run rings. The beauty with these is, is we've designed them that even if the lead should become stuck in rocks or something and snagged up, with 65 pound braid, you can actually break these rings. So fine for casting. But again, if you should become snagged up, you can free the gear without losing the rig and the hooks. Now, on that, this becomes a standard on these ledged uh, up traces. We've got one of our mini booms, and that just stops the lead from banging on the, the trace wire and damaging it. I like the fact that we've got an XL 
clip on here. Uh, that allows me to take the trace off if I'm moving swims or sometimes if I've got a fish in the net uh, I'll unclip the trace just because it makes it easy, easier to handle if I'm in a confined space I can just unclip the trace put the rod down and I'm not having to drag everything around with me and then I've got a Pike Pro ready-made trace on here this is one of the size 6 and this one I've just added a, uh, a small poly pop onto it just to make the bait buoyant and a mackerel and that's about it. And as I say, all of that is designed that if I should get, become snagged up, I can straighten those hooks out. OK, you're going to ruin a set of hooks, but you're not going to leave a baited trace in the water where it could get picked up and end up killing a fish. So everything's designed to make that, the chance of that happening as slim as possible. And that's about it. It's a rig I use a lot on the river. I say it's, it, I have it made up at home, um, ready to go. And often, if the conditions are looking right, I'll just nip out for an hour first thing in the morning and generally catch a fish or not and be back in time for breakfast. Um, a lot of my fishing's done like that. It's opportunist on local venues when I can uh, and that just makes life so much easier and you're fishing at the best time of day. So I hope that was interesting um, and something you can take away from that. Uh, give it a go and let us know how you get on. Thanks for watching.